You and your church and community have created Project New Generation to address issues of bringing youth into the full life of the church and the community. What was the genesis of that project? And can you tell us a little bit about how it works? Actually, the genesis uh, is, is one of the examples that I used uh, in the lecture earlier today. I happened to be at this local um, uh, uh, fast food kind of place, and I was sitting there, and a man had two young men with him. One was his son, I believe the other was his nephew, and there were two uh, 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 ladies. Uh, they were all engaged in the conversation. The two ladies obviously uh, worked at Yale. They had on blue uniforms. And uh, he was sharing with them that his sons were, uh, his son and his nephew were about to graduate high school, and uh, uh, I need for them to get a job. I need for them to work, do all that kind of stuff, get them a good job, and you know all that kind of stuff. And so they, uh, they were talking to the two young ladies uh, who were in uniform from Yale. Said, "Oh yeah, you can go down to so and so and see so and so person, and you know see what that's available at Yale, at Yale Hospital, or at the university, and et cetera." Because you know you got good jobs, you get good um, um, benefits, and, you know um, all that kind of stuff, etc. And I was sitting there minding my own business, not engaged with them. Uh, and they must have gone about a forty-five minutes to an hour, and I never heard anybody say, "Oh, did you consider going to college?" Mm. Uh, I know that some people will say that you know college isn't for everybody. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with that. But we live in a world today where at least you got to have something similar to it or you got to have it. And actually, that ain't even enough all day anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and for them to be going on for about 45 minutes of an hour, I thought that some place or somewhere needed to provide an opportunity to support uh, opportunities beyond the norm. That's how Project New Generation, that's one of the ways Project New Generation, uh, it also out of my frustration uh, as I was um, uh, the director for the Project Longevity uh, for a few years here. Um, um, uh, and in that pro uh, project, a combination of state and local and uh, federal government, I was at the U.S. Office of the U.S. Attorney's Office, and yes, we had some partners who were nonprofits and service providers and et cetera, uh, and yes, they could get jobs, and yes, they can, you know, help them find housing and et cetera, and everybody thought that somehow that was going to prevent them from ever getting back involved mm -hmm. or stop being involved and et cetera. Right. Oh, did you, got, you got a good job, so why would you do that? You gotta, and I think we were all missing the boat. Because, again, we were trying to put new wine in old wineskins. Yeah. And so as a result of that, uh, the genesis of Project New Generation came. And so in the church, we have really moved to the phase in which we are really working on college and professional and technical uh, kind of prep for them, uh, helping them to develop uh, vision plans uh, for their lives and executing them, as well as connecting them to navigators and or networks that kept them to kind of pursue those kinds of casting and vision. Uh, and so we don't define what the aim, what the purpose or plan is. We just try to equip you with the tools and point you in the direction. Mm. In the context of a community, and though, that, that is holding you, That's supporting you, you, and, you absolutely. To you, yeah. right. and so you're not afraid to fall. You're not afraid to mm -hmm. make a mistake. You're not afraid uh, to mess up uh, because there's a community that supports you and encourages you and believes you. One of the things that I vividly remember, again, uh, 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 I have no shame for this. I, I came from what I call the country and all been but. Um, as much as me receiving a degree from Morris College and a degree from Boston College Law School and a degree from Harvard Divinity School was a proud moment for me and my mother or my father, my grandmother, it was also a very proud moment for Mother Lingo mm -hmm. and Mother Robinson in my church, for mm -hmm. Pastor Severson and Pastor Boyd and Lady Boyd. It was also important for Mr. Lonnie Price and, and uh, Minister Harriet and Miss Keaton, my Sunday school teachers. Mm -hmm. It was important for uh, Miss Beotha, who lived next door to me, and, et cetera. and that's what I'm, uh, I'm talking about. That was my experience that helped me to become who I believe God intended me to be. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to glean from that experience to give opportunities for other people. Miss Beotha, Mother um, Lango, or my grandmama Muddy, or my mother didn't tell me 
what I should do. Mm. They pointed me in the direction mm -hmm. for that and provided me the necessary support and networks in order to be successful and get into God's purpose and plan for my life. 